about five hours of sleep a night. About six to seven hours of sleep a night. Seven hours of sleep every night. And five hours of sleep every night. Five hours of sleep. Just six hours of sleep a night. And five hours of sleep every night. Just seven hours of sleep a night. Six hours of sleep a night. How many hours of sleep do I get a night? I usually get around seven to eight hours. Well, normally on just like a normal weekend, I get probably eight hours of sleep and on like a school night, probably seven and a half. Uh, so my thoughts on teen uh, sleep deprivation, not getting enough. Uh, I know research says that four out of every five teens says they wish they could get more sleep. Um, they're just not getting enough and it impacts them throughout the next day or the week or however long that sleep deprivation is lasting. Sleep to me is important because I do a ton of stuff all day and so I really need it to function. <laughs> Sleep is just, you know, laying in, laying in my bed, all the lights off, windows closed, or uh, like blinds closed. I like it being really dark. I don't like any light at all. So, yeah. So what keeps teenagers, adolescents from getting enough sleep? Um, easiest answer from a scientific standpoint is circadian rhythm, uh, their biological clock. Uh, schools are set on the standard of, you know, get up at 6.30, be to, class, or be to school at 7.45. Um, so teenagers, their biological clock does not have them awake and alert at that point. So they go through the day tired, they didn't get enough sleep, and then you think, well, they should just go to sleep at 9 or 10, but their biological clock actually, for most teenagers, gets them revved up about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and their, uh, their energy levels are higher because of this circadian rhythm. When I don't get a good night's sleep, I can feel my health like decreasing. <laughs> I can tell that um, I just feel different and I know that when I don't get good sleep, I don't feel as great and I can tell that, I mean, later down the line, I can tell there's going to be repercussions for not getting enough sleep, but <laughs> sometimes I have to. <laughs> I think it's very important for health and I think um, if you aren't getting a lot of sleep in, in a night, you're going to have a tough time learning and being able to function in day-to-day -day life. It's going to make it way more difficult. What are the long-term consequences of sleep deprivation? Uh, number one, sleep deprivation is a predictor of depression. About 71% um, greater chance of suffering from depression if sleep deprived long-term. Um, and also it plays a critical role in weight gain, not just in making people feel more hungry, but also in the uh, production of fat, oddly enough, from hormones that are in too high of level when we are uh, not getting enough sleep. I think for me personally, just thinking over assignments or things that I do throughout the day really affects my sleep because I start to think about them too much and sometimes that affects my amount of sleep I get and I overthink things so then I don't fall asleep as easily. School affects my sleep poorly because I have to wake up super early to um, get my bus because I have to, my bus gets some, my stop at 6.45 so I have to wake up early to get a shower in and all that so I think it negatively affects my sleep schedule. When I don't get enough sleep the next day, I usually feel pretty awful because I just can't function. <laughs> I feel horrible. I feel really bad. Like, if I don't get a good night's sleep the night before, I will feel like crap all day until I can get home and take a nap, so. Oh, I get so much more sleep in the summer. It's so nice. I don't necessarily sleep in in the summer because I have to work, but I still find myself getting a better night's rest. It's really nice. <laughs> During the summer, I sleep longer because I don't have school, because I don't have to wake up at 6.45. I can wake up at eight or nine or whatever, so I can stay up a little later, but I can sleep in more. Um, During the school year, it I get less sleep. During the winter, I get more sleep because I'm not out 
as much doing stuff. I'm just kind of chilling in my house. Once theater season starts, I feel like because I'm doing so many things, once my head hits the pillow, I'm just out because <laughs> I'm just so tired, but yeah. Sometimes there are football games that I want to watch that go late. Sometimes, obviously, like I said, school starts super early. So if I have to go, if I have to stay up the night before doing something, whatever it is, homework, being somewhere, I think what stops me from getting a good night's rest is probably, if I'm honest, my phone. Everyone's awake at the same time of night, right before we all have to sleep. And so the time I'm usually talking to people the most or contacting with people about, whether it's things about the next day or just something like a friend texted me, I usually tend to see that and then I stay awake. <laughs> Yeah, technology plays a pretty big role because it's like, it's just science where like if when the blue light from the phone hits your eyes, it simulates daylight. So it makes it so you don't get the chemical releases you need to sleep. So that just, it's, it's not good. I definitely see students uh, using their phones to check in on social media much more today than I did several years ago. And I also see that it doesn't have these positive effects that I think they wish and hope that it would. So solutions, um, it's the same thing they, they talk about with new parent, parents of new babies of infants is establish a routine and that's true of any age. Um, set the expectation in your brain that you should be getting sleepy and it'll help you fall asleep. And second thing is put those darn devices that cast light into your eyes away about 30 minutes before you go to sleep because that light impacts hormonal release and you don't get melatonin release if you have light coming in your eyes. Melatonin is what helps you sleep.